So I'm continuing some experiments on active functional text in Emacs, and today I wanted to tackle the idea of chemical formulas. Chemical formulas in their most general uh, form aren't really that amenable to regular expressions, so I wanted to use a, a real parser, and pi parsing is, is one of those that, that can be used. Now pi parsing is a Python-based parser, and so what I wanted to work out today was using an external program to provide me with the patterns that I could use with button lock to make functional chemical formula links. So let's, let's work through here uh, what we're trying to do. Here's an example of a, of a parser. We have an element. We define an integer as, as a number. An element reference here is a group of an element plus an optional integer. And a chemical formula is going to be uh, match the pattern of a word start with one or more element refs with an optional plus or minus and then ending uh, at the word. So we, we can define the chemical formula here if we pass uh, this string to it, then we can scan the string with uh, chemical formula dot scan string. And what we do is uh, sort these so that we have the longest one first. And you can see we find almost everything in the string that looks like a chemical formula. So if I could just get this string to be the buffer string then and pass it to a function, then we could probably get the patterns that we want. So let's look at uh, that idea here is uh, a Python block that will tangle to a command line uh, program. We'll make it executable here and tell it to use Python. It still does almost the same things, uh, but we use, uh, we first get a set so we get the unique ones, and then again we're going to sort it, and down here we print out uh, a Lisp form of the data. We'll get back to that in a moment. And so now I can echo this shell script that echoes this long string and it passes uh, through a pipe into the program and that returns this quoted list of chemical formulas. That actually looks really good. So all we need now is to take our whole buffer string and pipe it into this command and so I, I use this shell command on region to a string um, to get the region from the uh, that I'm interested in here, point min to point max is the whole buffer and run the shell command parse chemical formulas dot pi on it and what it returns is actually surprisingly a little bit less than perfect and I don't know why there's some things in here like the and, and fir and co uh, things that clearly don't match my parser pattern but uh, for the most part we have uh, a lot of other chemical uh, formulas in here so we can take this output, accepting this sort of non-perfect uh, output as probably a consequence of, of my parser design, and use that in button lock. So what we're going to do is take each of these and make a giant regular expression to match each one of these exactly. And that's why we ended up sorting them, because the first one that matches is the one that gets highlighted. And what we'll do is highlight these and have it open the NIST web book um, at, the, uh, at that formula. So, so here's the, uh, the button lock. We um, evaluate what we read here. So if I run this, now it's going to highlight a bunch of things in, in the buffer like CH4, ethanol, benzene, uh, and so forth. You can see there's no uh, context here. Um, this is the word as, not the uh, element arsenic. But we can now click on one of these and we'll get information about it uh, at the NIST webbook. Or we can click on this and see uh, what we find for methane. So I think that's basically kind of useful. Uh, clearly the parser is not, uh, not perfect and lacks context, but if you had one that was very good, then you could use this as, the, as an idea to uh, add things to chemical formulas. It's obviously kind of static because if I uh, put in a new, um, say if I put in CH4, it's automatically highlighted, but CH3 will not be recognized until we run it again. So it's definitely not perfect, but um, if we could integrate that kind of a parser into Emacs, we might be able to uh, get, get it to be more, uh, more dynamic. Finally, I just want to point out up here, we saved the button lock 
uh, in a variable and we can use the variable then to uh, remove those highlights if we're tired of seeing them. So that's, that's it for today and hope you found that useful.